Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, in the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is the 2nd of May, Monday, 1 p.m., just after 1 p.m., and uh, it is the first day of Ayah, the Hebrew second month, the year 5782. And the theme today is putting on the armor of God. And we begin with finally, my brethren. This is my favorite, favorite chapter, the first chapter that the Lord ministered to me when I got saved, the day I got saved. I heard these verses, especially verse 12. So we're going to start there. Okay. So I'm going to explain this warfare that's happening in front of our very eyes. It's unfolding this world war. It's not a, it's, it's a, it's a war against humanity and it starts, it is, it starts, it is happening right now, not in front of your eyes, but it's been happening for millennia from the beginning of mankind. We have two, two kingdoms warring each other. It is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, which is run by Satan. That is the only wars that's actually happening right now. What you're seeing before your eyes is a manifestation of that war. Right. So we're going to start off here with uh, Ephesians, my favorite, 6, chapter 6, verse 10. And this is the theme. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Here's my verse. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is a spiritual battle, people. Our brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this. When you're fighting, when you're disagreeing with people and you want to avenge for, for backstabbing someone, did you wrong? You are actually warring against the devil. And they are, let me explain, this verse will explain to you what, what I mean by that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now what are these, these, what are these principalities, right? I mean, going to explain how Jesus defeated what Jesus did to assist us in this battle. This is why he had to die. Colossians 2 verse 15 and having spoiled principalities and powers he made an open show of them openly triumphing over them in it what he did on this cross is exactly that I just want to just go backtrack one verse verse 14 blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us that accusations of the devil against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross he was nailed to this cross and that's what he did right now we're going to get back to to um uh verse um i'm gonna carry on we are on verse 12 this is the principalities there against powers this is satan's powers he's the prince of the air ephesians 2 verse 2 against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to read you a verse, what that actually means in Daniel 10, 21. 10, 10, 13, sorry. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days, that's 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, who is an angel, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now what this verse is saying that there was, there is a battle. I mentioned before that there's three heavens. Lord created the heavens, plural. So he's seated in the third heaven. Now in the second heaven, that's where the battle and the kingdom of darkness is supposedly placed. But it is there. But the, the, the Bible, this is the closest explanation to where it's situated. So, it says here that on his way down to Daniel while he was praying, he was there was a resistance and he had to call in for help. Is it a, I think it was Angel Gabriel, but he called in and Michael came to help him. Yeah, Gabriel and then Michael came to help him. So there is constantly warring and these angels are our guide. 
These angels are our guide and our protection. Right. I need to move. Uh, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand. In this verse, stand appears multiple times. So you must not fear. You must stand firm and stand strong. Stand therefore having your loins girt your waist, your loins girt, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So that is loins girt with, about with truth, having your breastplate of righteousness, which is this, you get dressed every day and you say these things to protect yourself from this evil day that's befallen mankind. Having your feet shod, this is your shoes, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith Ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I'm going to pause there and come back to verse 12. Right. When, this is how the Lord ministered to me when I heard this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Immediately the Lord showed me a picture of when I saw this Bible verse for the first time, I saw a Bible verse up in front of me. And I saw this verse, and the Lord ministered to me the, a picture of Geppetto and Pinocchio. And I was like, that's uh, actually something that I will remember forever and ever. Amen. And it says there that, and he showed me that, for he pointed to Geppetto and he said, okay, I'm Pinocchio. For example, we are Pinocchios. And he says there, now, who's operating you? There's only two spirits that two, two kingdoms can operate there. It's the Holy Spirit, which is righteous and truth. Truthful, he will tell you everything. Then there's a deceptive spirit. Now that is saying that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you have to have, there's only two, two different kingdoms. You have to be on the other side. So it says there that you must discern what spirit is operating in front when you meet anyone what spirit is operating in you. It is a deceptive and a subtle spirit like in the Garden of Eden. That Geppetto and Pinocchio is a very apt description of what, of what the spiritual battle is like. You are either an instrument for the devil or you have received the adoption of the Spirit of God. And he doesn't control you. You've got free, free reign. The devil controls you. Right. So now the final, final weapon. I'm just going to read, read, read you verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. Protect your thoughts, your mind. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is the sword of the spirit. But the most powerful weapon of them all is praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. This is the most powerful weapon is pray in the spirit. And pray is your, pray is powerful. It is your angel dispatch order number. I want you to remember that. Your pray is your angel dispatch order number. You know, for any, in any business, you have to fill in a form, an order form. When you buy anything, you have to pray. Now, prayer is exactly that in the spirit. The order form is the physical, but prayer is your order dispatch for an angel to come down. And when you are praying in fast and you're dying to the flesh, as Romans 8 says, you're killing 